Hello and welcome back. As you know, Halloween is right around the corner, and so I'm going to go ahead and do this tutorial. Uh, it's a Halloween tutorial on how to make a spider web in Adobe Illustrator, and hopefully it helps you out uh, during this time of year. Or, uh, you know, it, you can use it any other time of year as well. So uh, go ahead and uh, sit back and watch, and uh, hopefully you learn something. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just get started. The first thing that you do is you open up a, a new blank document, and you can go ahead and just set it to the uh, default settings. Not a big deal. <clears throat> the next thing that you want to do is go over to the left side and click on your tool talent. You want to click on your shapes tool, and usually it's probably going to be this square. So what you'll want to do is click and hold down, and, uh, and go down to your ellipse tool on there. And then go over to your screen, and uh, click on the screen, and you're going to want it to be 150. And uh, it doesn't matter what the, the dimensions are uh, set to. Mine's set to points. Uh, yours might be set to pixels or inches. That's okay. Uh, the main point is that you get it set to 150 of any unit. And then you're going to go ahead and press OK. And it'll make your circle. You go ahead and click on the screen again. And set the next one to 50. And 50. And click OK. So now you have these two circles. The next thing you want to do is press Control R on your screen to bring up the rulers. Mine were already up, yours probably won't be. So press Control R and bring up the rulers. And you're going to make a cross in the middle of the screen. And what you're going to want is to make a cross and place your first circle. And I'm going to go zoom out a little bit. Place your big circle so that it's centered right in the middle of that cross. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in so that it's just centered a little better. So like I was saying, um, you want your circle to be in the exact middle of that cross you made with your guides. So I'm going to go ahead and what I'll do is just drag it and make it so that it's exactly um, centered in there. One thing that you can kind of do is select your um, select your circle along with your one of your guides and you can uh, use your align tools and if those aren't up already uh, you can go up to window and down to align and these align tools will pop up and you can center things to the lines. So like right now I have the circle on this line um, highlighted and I clicked on my um, center align tool right here, my horizontal align tool. And what I'll do is I'll select then the circle and my other line here so that I have my horizontal. And I will then click my horizontal align. And it should be perfectly aligned now uh, with those two lines. Um, centered, I, I should say. Uh, then what you'll do is you'll take your smaller circle and you'll go ahead and um, make it centered. The center of this circle will be touching the perimeter of your bigger circle. So actually the outer two anchors, the right and the left anchor, will be above the outer edge of this circle, but the center will be right on that line. And then what you'll do, if uh, it, it should look like this right now, what you'll do is you'll select with your uh, smaller circle selected. You'll go up um, and you'll to your toolbar on the left, and you'll select your rotate tool. And you will then move your cursor to the middle of the, the crosshairs, the uh, the two guides that you made. And you'll go to the very center. <clears throat> You're going to press down um, Control, oh, excuse me, Alt, and you will then click, and it'll bring up your uh, options panel for your rotate tool. You're going to want to put in 360 divided by 10 so that we can get 10 even circles around the outside of um, the bigger circle. We're going to press copy. You then press uh, control D to repeat that step until you're evenly, you have even circles all the way around the outside. And then that's what it should look like. <clears throat> then what I want you to do is go ahead and highlight everything that you have there. Go up to window, down to pathfinder, and open up your pathfinder tool. And there they are. And I want you to um, click on minus front. And that'll give you a shape like this. And uh, that's your basic spider web shape. You can, uh, you can adjust the size of this shape if you want, or you can uh, 
do what I'm about to do right now and you can change the stroke. You can go up to Window, down to Stroke, and bring up your Stroke palette. Mine's already open. I'm going to bring mine uh, down to a 0 0.5 point stroke. And you have to have your shape selected in order for that to work, so 0.5. And so my, it's just going to make your spider web a little thinner. And uh, what I'll then do is I'll select my spider web uh, shape, and I'm going to press Control C and Control V to make a copy and paste. And I'm going to shrink uh, one of them way down. And uh, I'm going to want to click and press uh, Shift so that uh, it shrinks down in proportion. And I'm going to go ahead and select both of them. And once again, go to my alignment tools, which should be uh, next to your pathfinder here. And I'm going to vertically and horizontally align them so that they're uh, directly inside of one another. I'll select both of them, and I'm going to go up to Object, down to um, Blend, and go to Blend Options. And I want to go to my spacing and go to Specified Steps. And you can kind of do whatever you think looks good here. I'm going to do about 15 steps and click OK. Then go back up to Object, down to Blend once again, and go to Make. And that's going to make this sort of shape on your screen. And as you can see, there's a, a basic spider web shape here. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that. Uh, what you'll want to do is you'll take your line tool from the tools palette, and you'll just uh, simply draw a line along the points so that you have a line on every single point. And you'll just do that all the way around the outside. And I'm just going to go kind of quick here. Not worry about being sloppy a little bit, just so I can kind of wrap this up for you guys. And this is pretty much the end of it. You can then, of course, um, either go find free vectors of spiders or learn how to make your own spider and uh, you know put some bugs in the spider web or something like that. You can change the colors of the spider web um, and do that sort of thing. Something uh, This is how it kind of turns out in the end. You have a lot of options that you can do with this so uh, I hope you learned something. Um, I hope you, you enjoy the final result here. Uh, please check out the other tutorials on my blog at uh, Glaze Folio Design Blog. And uh, if you like this, uh, this YouTube video, if you're watching it on YouTube, please click the like button below. And, uh, and uh, please follow me on Facebook and Twitter and uh, tell your friends. Thank you very much.